you created a model Maya, you laid out the UVs, and now you want to get some of that sweet, sweet PVR goodness from Substance Painter. There's only one issue. You don't know how to export it right. But don't worry, your boy JL has got your back. I created a simple workflow that is going to correctly uh, export your assets, your models from Maya into Substance Painter. And I'm going to be sharing that with you in the video coming up. What's going on you 3D modeling beasts? This is JL Musi and today I'm going to be showing you how to quickly export your mesh from Maya and import it into Substance Painter so you can quickly start texturing your assets. Okay, so right here uh, and if my uh, PC doesn't uh, spit on my face and quit, I'm actually going to run uh, Maya and Substance Painter to just really be able to see both programs at the same time and maybe things will click a little bit better uh, if you've been struggling to just get your exports uh, properly, right? But uh, basically, um, the first thing that you need to do is separate everything by material, right? So everything that you want is a separate material set. So for example, uh, this main slab here is its own uh, you know, set right here. And if we look at it, I can go to focus mode, right? So this slab here, it's its own texture set. And that texture set is pretty much dictated by this material right here, okay? And um, if we go ahead and um, bring up the properties on this, uh, one thing to note is that uh, slab one main is the, the actual name of the material but here in Substance, it's slab main. And that's because Substance actually derives the name, not from the material, but the actual uh, shading group uh, family, right? The shading, the actual shading group. So um, if you're in the attributes and you click this, um, this right button to go to the output uh, connections, you see now that we uh, are able to see the shading group attributes. And this is the uh, the actual name that you will basically see once you bring it into Substance Painter, right? So when I started, I named all my Lamberts, I renamed them, I brought them into Substance, and none of the names reflected the changes. That's because you actually have to update the, like I said, the shading group attributes. So once you got the naming convention down, um, then uh, pretty much... Um, that's all you need to actually separate it, right? So this right here is, if we look at the UVs, it's going to have pretty much its own uh, UV set, right? So for everything that you basically group, you want to make sure that you are maximizing uh, that UV space. And what I wanted to do is go to the uh, 2D view, right? So here, uh, we basically um, separated uh, this and this, right? Uh, so for example, uh, these guys, right? These are three, um, you know, three props, right? Um, but they all have the same material. Thus, they are optimized in the same uh, UV space, right? So if we look here, you see that's optimized by the material, right? Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, like I said, it is going to treat that uh, as one material group and you definitely want to optimize for basically that texture set, okay? So the other thing that's important here is really figure out, um, you know, where your high definition meshes are coming from. And basically this is where naming becomes very important, right? Because uh, here, if we go to the, um, the bake mesh maps option, right? Um, you basically want to go ahead and for this slab, we did have a high definition mesh, right? Um, so here, here's the low res, um, but in my scene, let me go ahead and kill this. So let's take a look at the high and then the low, right? And if we're looking at this, right, this, this was, um, this decimated mesh, the high definition mesh was generated, uh, from ZBrush. Um, so if you have like an asset that's basically you want that high definition mesh that's coming from ZBrush. Um, all you really got to do is when you export it from ZBrush, just make sure that the names actually match, right? Right now, they don't match on purpose. So slab underscore high, right? Um, you want to make sure that it actually matches this right here. What I'll do is I'll take whatever it is in Maya, right? 
uh, and then I'll just copy this part here. And since this is my low res, right, um, what I'll do is then I'll take the high res and I'll make sure that it's named properly, right? So we're gonna need the underscore. And this is gonna make sense uh, in the um, substance part, right, when I switch over here. But if you are making maps in substance, right, you wanna make sure that the high, uh, and this doesn't really matter where it is, right? But what I like to do with all my low res meshes, I do like to group them, right? And um, now I could just go ahead and hide this. We no longer need it. But I just basically like to group it. And now, you see that basically all my lows, right? Everything that has basically a low and a high res is gonna have pretty much a low prefix in the group. It's gonna be separated by those materials. And then I can go to file and then uh, export selection and then just export it as OBJ or you can export it as a FBX, right? These are the settings that I have on before I export. And um, basically I will uh, export my OBJ. All right, it's time to bring in that OBJ that we exported from uh, Maya. So we'll go to File, New. Uh, we'll leave this template as the default, that's fine. Uh, document resolution, uh, we could always change that as well. So I'm gonna leave that. So here we'll just browse for that file. So, and mine is this uh, pedestal here. Uh, I'll hit Open, hit OK. So you can just go through your scene, uh, rotate your uh, environment map with shift and right clicking. And uh, if you click on these right here um, and you have basically the 2D, 3D view enabled, uh, you should see pretty much just this default material and your UV sets as well. Your naming convention should be, uh, if you name it properly, according to that uh, shading group, they'll post up here. Uh, you also have the ability to uh, isolate. Uh, if you go to focus on any one of these uh, and you go to focus, you'll be able to focus and kind of work with that material. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically just uh, open the version that has um, all the uh, textures already uh, worked on. If you need to bake out your normal maps, so I'll take this same one here, right? This slab main, the one that we were working on in Maya. And then I'll go ahead and um, just basically uh, focus on it. And then uh, once we have that, if you need to uh, bake your mesh maps, right? Uh, initially, when you come into Substance, you're not gonna have any of these, right? So it's gonna look something like this. And then I'll, I'll go here onto the layers and I'll just add a fill. And let's go ahead and just take these guys here. So I just basically grouped them, I'll hide them. It's gonna be just a flat mesh pretty much. You'll go here to bake mesh maps. And then um, if, if you need basically that, um, that hide information, um, you're only gonna bake out a normal map. You can go ahead and just make this a 2K map, browse, find that high definition uh, mesh with the right underscore high. So if you want uh, crisper maps, uh, I do recommend that you do maybe a subsampling of four by four for your anti-aliasing. Uh, you see right here that you're telling substance to match the high and the low, right? And there it is, underscore high, right? So you, you bring in your high definition meshes through there and you should be ready to go. Um, if you have any issues, um, you can play with these sliders right here. Usually the default works fine for me. Um, what I'm actually gonna do is link uh, in the description down, uh, right, actually I'll link it right here on the card. Um, and that's another YouTube video. Uh, that's straight from Algorithmic and they go deeper. Uh, they dive in pretty deep on the science. They actually explain it probably better than I can just exactly how to play with those tolerances if you are having issues with your initial bakes of your normal map. And then I'll go ahead and do a bake uh, slab uh, maps and just have the normal map enabled. So there is basically our, um, our normal map. And then uh, the next step would actually be uh, to uh, bake the other mesh maps from the uh, normal itself. So we can go back to mesh maps. We should no longer need that. If we take the normal off and we bake the rest of these guys here, this is a good time to scratch a beard. 
Just have a drink. Relax. Come on! Crazy. All right, so there we go. Substance uh, basically finished baking out the maps. And now, um, if we go to uh, our other channel, so if we go to the ambient occlusion, you see that it actually used that normal map to bake out the AO. And then also we should have it uh, in other maps like the curvature, right? So all, all those uh, other maps were stacked on top of that original uh, normal map that we actually baked from an exterior source that we imported in, right? So that's pretty much it for this uh, quick video. Thank you so much for your time. Please comment uh, on the video. Let me know your thoughts on it. Consider subscribing as I do uh, Maya and substance tutorials like this. Uh, and I will be doing more uh, substance stuff in the coming uh, videos. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.